All right, tubes. Now that our fenders are all on, nice and straight, and uh, looking pretty good, we got to keep things going with another project. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to black out my rims. And there's two reasons I'm doing that. A, just to uh, just to mess around with things and see how it looks, see if I like it or not. And B, the reason I'm doing that is I just want to make some changes to the truck, so uh, you know, appearance-wise, so that it's my truck and it doesn't look like every other truck on the road. Now for those of you guys that don't really care about the prep work and how it's actually done and just want to see the end result, you can see that I did do two of the, two of the wheels already. And I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. They definitely changed the appearance of the truck quite a lot. And you'll notice that I didn't paint the hubcaps. I left them silver and I'm glad I did that. I think that if, if I painted them black too, it would just look, uh, it would look like I lost a hubcap basically. And that just looks bad. But it changes the appearance of the truck a lot. And actually, with the, with the reflection of the sun, the back one kind of looks kind of looks silver still. But I think I think they look good. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. As far as prep work goes, it's pretty much the same as what you'd be doing if you're painting. Now, if I was going to paint these rims, I would sand them down as well. But other than that, it's it's pretty much the same idea. The first thing I did is I took them off the truck. I washed them down with soap and water, get all the road grime and uh, brake dust and all that stuff off of them. And not to mention it just makes my, uh, my tires look better too, rather than being all muddy and stuff. And then after that, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe everything down with uh, lacquer thinner, um, just to get everything, get the oils and stuff off of it. I always do that. Because if you look, I'm going to go over this real fast, and you'll be surprised, even though I clean this with soap and water, you're, you're still getting dirt on here. So that's a good idea to go over this um, a couple times with lacquer thinner, just to be sure you know you don't have dirt. Because that's dirt and stuff is, means you're your, your paint or your plastic dip, whatever it is, it's just not going to stick as well. Now you may notice there's there's a couple of these uh, these st these marks on here and stuff. They're on there pretty good, and the lacquer thinner isn't taking them off or whatever. So I'm just going to leave them. If it was paint, might be a different story. I'd want to, like I said, I'd sand them too, but I'd want to have my rims a lot cleaner. But for something like this, plastic dip, I'm not worried about it. It worked for me to paint over over top of stuff like this. I mean plastic dip, not paint. Um, if you guys want to clean it, I'd probably recommend it, so that way you don't blame me for telling you to do the wrong thing. But either way, the first thing you want to do after you wash it is wipe it down with lacquer thinner. Next step of your prep work is taping everything off. Now, depending on your vehicle, what your tires are like, you may or may, or may not have to do more or less of this. It just depends. For example, on this truck here, I don't have to worry about taping off where my lug nuts go because it's covered up by the by the hubcaps. However, if your lug nuts are going to be visible, you might want to tape off that part because what will happen is when you when you tighten them down, they'll mess up the plastic dip and it'll start peeling off from there and it'll just be a mess after that. But what I am going to do here is I want to tape off, I want to make sure my tires aren't covered. And again, you can peel the plastic dip off if, you, if you're not worried about the overspray. But however, since I don't want to have to bother doing that, I'm going to show you a little trick here. And then you may or may not have seen this before. I've seen a lot of people do this, probably because it works. What you do is you take a bunch of index cards and you just set them up overlapping and you go all the way around the tire. And then if it's windy out, you tape them. If it's not windy, you probably don't even have to bother doing that. I usually tape every couple of them just, just for uh, in case you do get a gust of wind. But all you do is you go and surround your whole tire like that and then you don't have to worry about any overspray. And then all you gotta do is make sure you get up close to the rim. But it's uh, this works real great, so I definitely recommend that you do this. Because then you don't have to worry about your overspray, especially if you're painting. That, that's an even better idea. It might not matter what the plastic dip, plastic dip, but if you're going to paint, you know why not do something like this? It'll save you save you a lot of time rather than trying to go around in a circle with tape. That's not as easy as it sounds. So after you get done with uh, your index cards there, got them all the way around. As you can see, I should forget the uh, tape about halfway around. I don't feel like taping them anymore and there's no breeze anyway. Uh, you're ready to paint. So obviously you got to shake up your can pretty good. If you don't know that, I don't know why you're watching this video because I'm not going to tell you everything. But either way, get your can shaken up pretty good. I usually shake it for about a minute. And you're ready to put down your first coat. Now your first coat is basically like a tack coat if you're painting. So you're just trying to go o go over everything real light so that you can see it. But don't expect your rims to be blacked out the first coat. Because if you try and do that, it's going to look bad. I promise. So just get a, a real light coat ever over everything. And don't be afraid to go too thin because this is only your first coat. So you got plenty more coats to make it look good. Like I'm going to... 
can go a little heavier, but not much heavier than this. I'm getting a little bit too heavy in some spots. When you get too heavy, it gets a little bit too textured. Normally you wouldn't be worried about that if you're just plastic dipping your tractor seat or something, but we're trying to make this look good. So you start with that, and uh, uh, I didn't really mention it, but don't hold it too far away and don't hold it too close. You can get away with being a little bit farther away, but too close is when it gets all bubbled up and stuff. So watch out for that. But let your top coat dry, depending on how thick you go. Probably only about 10 minutes. That's usually what I do. All right, when the time comes for your second coat, obviously shake up the can again. And uh, one thing I didn't mention before is it's usually a good idea, even though well, it depends how long you're waiting between coats. But if you're going to be waiting a little longer, like I, I waited more like 20 minutes for this because I was doing something else, it's a good idea to turn your can and spray it upside down. Because what happens is, is if it dries up a little in there, what happens is when you first spray, you get a little bit of a, uh, like b bubbles and stuff. And then that will appear on, on the final product and not look good. But your second coat, I usually don't go too much heavier than the first. Uh, I do try and get it relatively even compared to the first coat. The first coat, I'm just like trying to get a little bit over everywhere. So the second coat, if you want, try and make it make it a little bit more even. But I usually don't go too heavy until the third coat. So as long as you get a good good spray over everything, it should be pretty good. Make sure you go around the outer rim a little bit and uh, don't miss that. That's what you got the index cards for. Because that's pretty much what you got to do to get the outside. Just spray right along the index cards. You'll be okay. But uh, I call that pretty good for a, a second coat. Because again, you don't want to go too heavy with this stuff. Because you go, you go too heavy with it, it looks bad. You, you don't want that. So we're going to call that good for our second coat. All right, we're at the third coat here, and this is pretty much the coat where you can start building it up. And uh, again, you don't want to get too close to it. I already mentioned that before. Too far away isn't good either. Uh, try and try and be pretty even with it, and just don't stay in one place for too long of a time. And then the other thing you could do is, uh, like, where I have some spots here from that, that whatever that was on there, I build it up around there um, so that everything looks even. Um, but other than that, that's basically it. So. Depends on how many coats you want to do. Four is probably a good amount if you want, you know, up to five. But I usually don't do more than that because I try and get uh, two wheels out of a can. So what I'll do is probably after the fourth coat here, I'll do the other one. If I have a little extra, I'll try and do another coat here and use the last of it on the other wheel. But that's pretty much. So I think I'm going to call this a video just uh, just to keep this kind of short. Um, and you already saw what it looks like. Uh, but that's the idea. That's how you do it. And if I think of anything else to add, uh, I will. That's it. Thanks for watching, tubes. See you later. Okay, we're all finished up here, so I decided to put the wheels back on and just roll it down the driveway a little bit so you guys get one more look-see at it. And like I said before, I mean, I don't really have much to add. It really changes the appearance of the truck a lot, and I think for the better. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Mike was saying he thought that it was actually making the wheels look a little bit bigger. Small engine mechanic, that's what he said. Uh, I actually thought the opposite. I thought it makes them look smaller, but... One of the other things I did to this a couple weeks ago is I took the running boards off, the little steps on the side, because they're useless. You don't need them to get in, so the only thing they do is make it look lower. So actually, it's looking pretty good now with the black wheels. Maybe it does, does make the tires look a little bigger, make it look like it's sitting a little bit higher. I don't know. It's all an illusion anyway. We'll walk around the other side here. I'll show you how that turned out. I was thinking about painting my grill black, too, because I think that would look pretty good. That Kazak grill, it's, uh, it was never painted. It, I think it was replaced anyhow. I used to think it was the wrong grill, but this isn't the edge model. So I think that's the right grill, but it would look nice with paint on it, whether I paint it chrome or, or paint it black, something, something to give it a little more character. But over on this side, pretty much the same thing, but these are these are the ones I was doing in the video there. And Like I say, everything turned out good. It's, it's getting darker here, so it's harder to get an idea of what the texture is like, but it came out nice and smooth. You know, no big ripples or bubbles or anything like that. So as long as you do everything right, as long as you're paying attention to what you're doing, it'll turn out pretty well. So now I think uh, now I think we're done this video. Thanks again for watching. See you later, tubes.